Hey everybody, it is Jeff Fuller from Fuller and Warrior Works and Jerry Lee Medeiros from Sunfacer Manufacturing. And Hi. today we are coming to you live from here, Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, and the center of the universe and the left coast of the universe and the southern tip of the universe as well because we have a special guest today, one we of our favorites. We do have a special guest today, but before that, let's tell what tell them what we're talking about today. Well, what we're talking about today is difficult customers, but wait, there's more because what we're going to talk about actually even more than that is, you know, the holidays are here, folks. Okay. And you're already stitching and you need to know when to put down the hammer, when to say no. And I want to talk to you a little bit today about self-care and whatnot, because it is important that you take care of you first during this time, or you're not going to be having fun at Christmas at all. And so we're going to be talking about the customers that you may meet um, in general, but especially at this time of year when they're very harried and some things that you need to overlook. And other times you need to put them out on the curb. Fire them. All somewhere. right. And before That's we get too far from that we have a special guest joining us in the studio today it is letty walker from walker, walker woods creation and there she is hi letty. hello hello and hello. She's, she's the southern part of the universe because letty is in Teos. yeah texas no. i did not know that no letty's in ohio that's what I thought. But he's yeah. in Ohio. I was like, oh. Now, wait a moment here. I send your stuff to Ohio, not Tejas. No, you send me stuff to Ohio. <laughs> or maybe you've been sending her stuff to Texas and she's not been getting it. <laughs> that would explain a few things. No, I, I, you know what? I so associate you with that show because Probably. of the jacket, okay? It's, I, I just, you just were like, one of the highlights and and so therefore i think that you must be from there it must be and i can tell you the jacket even when i was in pittsburgh pennsylvania there were people that remembered me from the jacket <laughs> <laughs> so basically where you go there you are and we all know it and that that was the whole intent of it yeah yep awesome all right, all right. well we've well, got a couple of comments if you are in the comments let us know where you're watching from we have Suzanne watching from Rhode Island. Island. We have Gina from OKC. O Oklahoma City, baby. There you go. We have Mike Muldowney. Oh, hi. That's from Canadian. Watcher. And we have Betty <laughs> Jean here. Hello to you all. I'm in the northern part. Hi. And we have Eric here. Proactive preparation and guidance makes a lot of difference, but there are always pro p potential problematic customers. And then you sometimes use all the big words. <laughs> sometimes they're just not even potential. They walk in and with intent. They come in to intentionally be. There we go. We have Don what? from North Dakota. Oh, yeah. And oh, Justin Armenta, who is not in the studio today, watching from Arizona. That's we're not, awesome. not going to talk about that. No, I'm just kidding. We can. Oh. <laughs> and we have Rhonda here from Florida and we have Sheila. Hey guys, I'm watching. Okay, I said Texas. Thank you for representing Sheila. We needed at least one person from Texas and we got them. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. So let's talk. Customers. Okay, I will. What I want to say is this. Mm -hmm. When you're coming into these holidays, um, if you are new, then you especially want to know this stuff. But even if you're not, you need to make sure that you have a disclaimer form. People are going to bring in, you know, airline, airline stockings and things. And you need to have an idea of what you are going to stitch on and what you're not. Don't be caught unawares. And if you are going to stitch on that, you need to have a... Um, a release form that if your machine should you know eat it you need to tell it not to eat it anymore not do that and to let that thing go and you need to like let them know that sometimes those things happen 
And if you don't want to do that, you need to know. Also, you need to have a cutoff date, like when you're going to quit taking work. I can almost promise that as we get closer to the holidays, everybody's going to say, can you work it in? Well, then well, there's a rush there's now, isn't there? Yep. Right? And I know initially when I first started, I never wanted to turn anybody down because yeah. I was afraid I wouldn't get business again if I turned them down. And I bet you were cheap too, weren't you? Well, yeah, but it wasn't easy. <laughs> but was it fast? But was it fast and cheap? I That's wouldn't, I wouldn't. Okay. So <laughs> beside, moving on, you know, you'd think that Justin was in here too or something. I know. I mean, no, but I did. I, I, I really underpriced and overextended myself and it was yeah, mainly because, you know, I felt yeah. like I had to price lower to compete with people who had multi heads and I felt like I needed to work everything in because it, it, it you know, if you say no, they were going to go find somebody else. I didn't want them to go find somebody else, but what, Eventually, I realized is the reason they were coming to me is because everybody else had already told them no. Yeah. Well, I learned my lesson early on, and I'll tell you, it was a hard moment. I used to love Christmas. I mean, love. It. I would decorate. I would do all sorts of stuff. And um, one year, it was three days before Christmas when I realized that Christmas was three days away. I had no, I had made nothing. I had no decorations up. I didn't realize Christmas was coming. And that's when I realized that I um, really needed to set some boundaries for myself because clearly I hadn't. And I, and I was exhausted and I cried and it was just a crappy experience for me. I didn't like the customers. I didn't like myself. I didn't like embroidery. I didn't like my machine. And I really didn't like Christmas that year. So, yeah. I mean, it, it, I've been to the point that you're like, you know what? I don't think embroidery is for me anymore. You're looking at your machine. You're looking at your software and you're looking at your workload. And you're like, I'm, I'm done. I don't like this anymore. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> yeah, and then you go and you walk out for 20 minutes and you walk back in and you're like, oh, I'm not done. You're never going to be done. But that, and that's the thing is that you don't want to, especially around what's supposed to be a good time. And, and like, what is, what the holidays mean for me is that people may be being more joyous, hopefully for whatever reason, maybe they're finding their goodwill or, you know, they were blessed in some miracle, miracle way or whatever, you know, like something has happened, hopefully, or maybe they're enjoying the, the delicious root vegetables, who knows what it is, seriously. But, but the thing is, is that it's also a time of extreme stress for many people because many people are alone or they don't celebrate that, or they're alone for the first time, like, i.e. someone passed or, you know, whatever the circumstances are, or they've had a hard year. Um, um, at this time, we need to be completely present for ourselves, but also for our customers, because we want to be able to give them a good experience, but we need to know where to draw the line so that we also have one and that we get paid and all that jazz. Yeah, and, and I know we've talked a lot about supply chain issues, mm -hmm. but I think this year even more, you've got to back up those cutoffs even earlier. Yes. Because... I mean, I, I took an order in September for Christmas, 50 wow. some shirts. I was like, not a problem. This will be easy. Right? Yeah. You know how hard gray, gray hoodie sweatshirts are to fall <laughs> to find right now? I'm still looking for some sizes. Um, really? It's, still? Oh, oh, it, man. It, it, yeah. And you're going out to major websites and it's like the back order till april 2022 back order till august 2022 yeah no estimated ship date and, and i think that's that's something else you have to be realistic with yes. supplies that you're used to getting may not be there and you before you commit you better make sure you can get it or that you have a backup have you offered any backups letty have, have any of your customers been willing to switch or anything well um the one backup that I found was a lighter weight sweatshirt, and they're not real happy with that. Oh, well, yeah. So, and, and, and we'll work it out. I mean, and, and I will say um, thank goodness for Gildan USA because they can, on their website, you can pull up who has stuff in stock. 
It's like Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. I, I know. I know. You can put in all your sizes, and it'll show you every the quantity sitting in whose warehouse or color, which is kind of nice. That's um, beautiful. Yeah, I wasn't aware that Gildan did that, and they kind of turned me on to that website to kind of help with find the last couple I needed. But Thanks. yeah, it's be aware, guys. It is an ugly, ugly shipping mess out there this year. So, you know, and I think the closer we get to that deadline, the more because people they, they were a little more understanding when when this all first went Sorry. downhill, and the longer it goes downhill, people are starting to kind of lose that understanding of you know what oh, yeah, everything's hard to get right now. Their their focus is turning to I need this for Christmas. Yep. So Letty, Jeff, can somebody type in. Let Jeff, can you pick up that um that site that he was just expressing about uh, just explaining about so that people can actually go there and access the website okay you guys you guys chat and i'll look for it i'll, I'll look for it here i'll i'll, I'll look for it real quick Letty, okay. yeah, just shoot it to me a messenger, Letty, and then I'll post it in the right. comments. Because I think that's a really great resource. And the more that people can get their needs filled like that, the better it is for sure. Well, I know but, my one of my main concerns as, as decorators is that the more we go into this shortage, you know, eventually we're going to stop working just because we can't get stuff. Not because we can't do it, but because we can't get the supplies to get it done. Well, um, I, will, I will tell you that I'm having very good luck with my suppliers, but they're here in the U.S. All my stuff is U.S. made and yep. I'm not running. And so what I did, it's not decorating. OK, but like usually I would wait a little bit longer to submit a, a needle ease order and a hook wash order. But this time I back to back them. It's the first time I've ever done it. But it's because I don't want to have to wait. And because we're hitting the holidays and for me, my stuff, come, I'm going to need that in January, but yep. coming up to, we're coming up to Thanksgiving, we're coming up to Yule, we're coming up to Christmas, we're coming up to New Year's, we're coming up to, woo, office parties. <laughs> so. All right. So while we're on that, I'm going to jump back into the comments. We're going to bring up a couple and then we'll, we can kind of go Wait. on. So we have uh, Elizabeth here. From oh, hi, Liz. We have Mike. We are just dealing with a certain customer today, a time-consuming customer who wasn't bad to deal. Oh, we're going to uh, need that story. Deal okay. with, but just wasn't worth the effort. And time is money. There's always room to work it in. I mean, time eventually, is it, you, you wear yourself yeah. out. And once you burn out, it's it's tough to get back. Um, it is. We have Eric. It's my brand to bring those 50 cent words for everyone's edification. We had to put a 50 cent word in there. It, it's only bad when I can't read the word. That, that's really what it is. Um, and Candace, I have a Richard, Richardson one oh, yeah. that I still haven't been able to fill. And I know that that's, that they're still like they, they've done things to try and get them in sooner. But even then, they're still not able to get them in and people aren't able to get them. And um you know they 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 i think they said that they were going to start airlifting some in you know sending them over on planes and they raised they, they had a pretty steep price increase that came with them. Yeah. it was almost like 50 cents a hat i think wow well and they do what they gotta do. well that's what i'm saying it's it's going to be a permanent price increase it's not going to be a temporary it's i can't believe anybody <laughs> thought it would be otherwise you know and they're like oh it's permanent i'm like yes of course, everything's permanently risen. Hello. Yes, and then I expect everything to go up again. Oh yeah, I, I fully yeah. expect it all to go up again, and yeah. probably up again after that. It's there's no there's no such thing as a temporary increase. No, because it's always permanent. Even when their costs go back down, they're like, wait, they're still willing willing to pay a lot of money for this. That's right. And our cost was down. We just made more profit this year. Yeah, um, we got to do what we got to do. You know. And here we have Mike. I haven't seen a Richardson hat up here since April. Um, I know when I, the last time I ordered Richardson's, the last time, I've, I've ordered them twice since the great shortage of Richardson's and I've been able to get them, but I would me. check websites every day, first thing in the morning. Wow, dude. And I wasn't picky about the color. If I needed them in a special color, I wasn't going to get them. But I took what color they had, and not necessarily what color I needed, and thought I'm going to make my job work around the color options that I can get versus 
I'm going to stand here and say, I'm not going to order them unless if I get the black on black or the yeah. black and gold, you know, it, it, I, I think a lot of that yeah. for us yeah. as decorators, it turns into us educating our customers. Hey, hey, this is really bad to get this right now. Yeah. We can either yeah. wait until 2023 until you call <laughs> Sometimes. Yep. or we can, I can pick the first thing that we have and yeah. we can try and design around it. And, yeah. you know, I'm still, I'm still sitting on some stock, but there's, you know, the more you yep. can educate your customers and the more willing you're, you, the best customers are the ones that are willing to work with you and say, you know what, what, what can you get? Let's get what you can get and then we'll move on versus, well, I don't want to compromise and I don't well, want to Let's talk about that one. one. Let's talk about that one because that this is, see, here's the thing is that we, that, that it's, it's just a fact that 80 to 90% of your customers are just dream come true. But you get that one customer that is just 80 to 90% of heartache and they will kill you dead. And so I would like to talk about those customers and give some ways to work with the particular challenge and, and also to know when is the challenge unworkable. Like for instance, Mike had someone who, Great person, there's a lot of time, but the money isn't going to happen there. And so, but I guess I would assume that both parties would agree to that, that this isn't just a doable thing for us. It's not, it's not a win-win. But what I'd like to know is what do we do? I think we really need to talk about what do we do with that nasty person that is just very difficult? And what? how do we best address them to, if we can turn that perhaps and bring them in or calm it down or change it or know when to cut bait. Oh, that's a, that's a hard one, dearly. Cause yep. I think it truly depends on talk about interpersonal skills. Then um, we need to, but what, what interpersonal skills can people use to, what can people try to do? What can they avail themselves of to try to, calm someone down like that uh, and, a lot, and a lot of times people I, I think people want to know that they're hurt so i i yeah. really feel especially in this time people don't think people are listening to them i mean right That's i have this problem and it's at everywhere you turn you have the same problem and you feel like you're just out there going hey someone listen to me so sometimes it is you know what i it's as simple as going i understand what you're saying i i can appreciate your thing come sit down with me and I've had people actually sit down in my shop and go, let's go through all my suppliers. Okay. How about, how about another option? Can it, can we look at this? And I know you really had your heart set on this and let's help, help me try and find it. Okay. Right. And sometimes I've even told people, you know what, why don't you go see what you can find for a jacket and I'll put it on, you know, bring me your merchandise. So if, if you, you know, don't lay it all on me, I offer it to you, go out and see what you can find out there. And then they'll come back going, I really can't find anything. Okay. Well then let's, let's look again at some other options and what can we do? But I think you really have to first, you have to take that anger and just let them process. Cause they just, sometimes they just want to process and they want to hear that you understand it was an issue okay and what if they're still a jerk and they're just not having any of you you know then i think you have to cut them loose and go i just don't think this is a good fit and there here's some other people that you can try and there is nothing wrong with saying here are other people that do this in the area and they might be able to help you Yes, that's that's a good idea. Or what I like, what I like is when you say we're not a good fit because really you're right. identifying, and it's not a blame. It's saying we aren't a match here. We aren't able to work together, and so perhaps we shouldn't. <laughs> here's a solution instead of saying get out of my shop. You know, here's a solution for you. Now, please remove thyself from my presence, you know, but in a nice way, you know? 
Yeah. 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 You're fired. That's what I say. You're fired. Oh, you're you fired. say that to me every day and I still come back. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm going to grab a couple of comments here. Mike says, I haven't seen a Richardson hat up here since April. I think I got that one other. The yeah. $5 hat is almost extinct. Well, well that's true. On anyway. Uh, Rhonda, I've heard there's 80,000 truck driver shortages, and I presume is a lot of the problem. The I know there's problem. a lot of containers sitting off uh, yeah. the, out in the sea, too. Um, Bevy Dean, what about the black pit hats? Yeah. My son in law yeah. showed me his on Sunday. I thought, yeah, yeah no, not a Richardson, but I heard they were back ordered now. Um, I know oh, I need a, a two extra large and a flex fit in gray, and I did not think that it was going to be back ordered. But sure enough, Two extra large and gray flex fit hats are backward. So there's big melons out there, Tiffy. Big melons. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's as decorators, we did what everybody else did. When Richardson's were out of stock, we pivoted to another manufacturer. And then we pivoted to the next manufacturer, and then we pivoted to the next manufacturer until there were other manufacturers left. And so it's so not that the Richardson's are out. It's, you know, everybody we're moving from one out of stock person to the next person that's very soon out of stock because you know i'm trying to find garments letty's trying to find gray sweatshirts and yep. the first place we find those items we're going to buy them and then they're not going to be there for the next person after us because right. well limited supply limited demand and you know we also have to be very cautious of the people that are buying and trying to sell them you know i have a friend he want he was trying to buy four richardson hats and somebody messaged him on Facebook and said, yeah, I've got those. I'll sell them to you. And he said, okay, how much are they? And he told him 30 bucks a hat. He said, are you going to embroider them too? Nope. 30 bucks a hat blank. So yeah. we have to be careful of those too. Well, hoarder. Not only that. So, and another thing you have to watch is right now, people know there's a shortage. Um, a lot of the Facebook groups for like embroidery D stash, you know, groups, do your research on who's selling it because I'm telling you there's a lot of people out there promising they have the goods and you'll never see them. You yep. will never see them. I know a gal, I, I know a gal who actually bought an embroidery machine off of eBay. Yeah. Thousands and thousands of dollars, like eleven grand, never got the machine. Wow. I swear, I know. <laughs> You know, at least with eBay and you have a little bit more protection than just, you know, now on Facebook groups, they're like, send it to me in no, like Venmo, shoot me Venmo because there's no seller protection. There's no buyer protection. Oh, I didn't know that. Or send me Zelle, bank to bank, straight bank to bank, a cash app, straight bank to bank. And there is no, there's no recourse. If they take your money. You cannot get it back. You cannot call Zelle or Venmo or Cash yeah, App. I want my money back. They didn't provide the thing. There is nothing. Once you send that money, it's gone. Yep. Well, so these things, all these shortages, are these like, are these all, are any of them USA companies? So USA, like, what I mean is, is, I don't mean like somebody bringing them in from from another country. What I mean is, are these people who actually manufacture here in the States? Some of it is. Yeah. I, I really think some of it is. And you're seeing the shortage just because even to manufacture it in the US, you have to have the textiles to manufacture it. Yeah. So that's true. Yes. You know, I can manufacture in the US, but if I'm bringing in my material from Bangladesh or, or wherever, I could still not have any material. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. To make it. Or, oh. or I may not have the workers to put it together. Yeah, there, yeah, that is a big issue right now, employees. I tried to um, get something marked with a fiber laser uh -huh. and the guy said, I'm sorry, I don't have enough employees right now. What? Okay. You know, it's like, even then we're, that US manufacturer, we're still going to see issues because, you know, let's say that they can produce 200,000 hats a year. Well, now all of a sudden demand is 5 million hats a year. They can still only produce 200,000. They're not going to be yeah. able to meet that demand because now there's not that. And I know like exactly what Led is saying. There are some supplies because uh, my son's starting to make caps and we're gearing up on the equipment and the supplies. There are some supplies that you cannot buy in the U.S., period. You cannot get them. Yeah. They yeah. have to come There's from another country. And... You know, I was like a piece of equipment that they don't manufacture in the U.S. The only place that manufactures it is China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 
I talk to the Chinese the, the company in China and and they tell me it's got to go on a container and I instantly like I'm not it. it's going to go on a container I'm never going to see it it'll be in the ocean it'll be you know and I've seen get back up. Get some of these um hats and stuff that are coming out sooner and there's there's mold on them yeah have you have you seen yes I've seen that but have you seen like I saw today an image of just part of the ocean of all the containers that are sitting oh, out it's like yes. oh my god it's, yeah. it's land mass out yep. there well and like i said i mean and you can't dock them all at one time and you can't unload them all at one time and you no. can't truck containers you can't do out. anything all at once it's Boy, not, mess. It, it truly is a bottle it, it is a bottleneck and you have to it's a it's a log jam for for all intents and purposes it's a log jam of you know, well, this is there, what what can people do to keep their businesses going during these times? Because we do need to keep the doors open to get over this hump. Well, my my big thing that I I've been telling people right now is freestanding lace. Oh it's yes, yes, yes. Even your supplies are water soluble stabilizer and thread, mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about getting a garment. You don't have to worry about you know, it, it removes a lot of the, we can't find it to stuff that we can get right now. Um, and so that's been one of the things I've been pushing is freestanding lace or go to Walmart <laughs> or target or your favorite oh, big store and go clear them out of stocking yeah. and start selling, you know, sell them monogrammed. You don't have to mark them up for the store price, but you can mark them, you know, you can say, well, the monogramming is this much money. And this is what you buy it at the store for and you know it's really it's turning into what you can get and what you can focus on yep and, and how creative you are you you have to yep. have that's how to do that you have to be able to this is something that we covered some times ago but mm -hmm. we talked about being able to flex and being able to survive you know in this industry it's not about just you know you have to be able to see you have to kind of be able to see what's coming, where you've been, but and, and where things are headed. But you've got to be able to roll in other products or price stream and income somehow, so that you don't have everything, all your chickens in one, you know, all the eggs in one proverbial basket. You need to be able to survive, and so you need to get other things on your machine. If if you are an embroiderer, you need to get other things on there. If you're a digitizer, you need to get other kinds of designs out there. Yeah, I even thought, as silly as it sounds, you know, the whole uh, embroidering on toilet paper seems to have kicked up again. <laughs> That's good like, money. It is good money. And I'm thinking, you know what, like craft craft fair? I mean, seriously, yep. craft fair? Yep. That's, you know, what I do is I go to the dollar store on that, and I go and I go get the really cheap, um, the, um, what is it, the, the Scott tissue pre-packed. No, 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 I know. I use real tool on that. I go and I get that and I get their big sheets of like off the bolt tool and I just lay it all out and cut it. But what I do is I go get the metallic, um, it's little wires, that have little stuff that hangs off of it. You know, it's like, it's like, it would be like ribbon, except it's wire. It's grading. Oh yeah, it, it, okay. it's, it's wire wrapped ribbon. Yeah. Yes, right, right, right. But yeah. it, and it's got like sometimes you'll find little designs on them or whatever, and they have like thank you, thank you, or happy Valentine's Day or whatever little hearts. And I use that, and then I take a pencil, and I roll some of that around it, and then I pull it off so they're a little springy. I'm telling you, man, you do that, and people buy that stuff for like ten, twelve, fifteen bucks a roll. All right, I'm gonna try and catch up on like we're gonna we're gonna try and get comments. I okay. promise. Uh, Linda says, "Good evening, everyone." Hi, Linda. This is how far behind I am. Mike says, "I don't have time or inclination to convert a jerk out of flight to get myself out of the situation." Adults need to bring their A game from the get go. I'm not gonna drag it out of you. Um, and then we have around here oh. like that you're preferred over Richard. Yeah, Canada. but you're in Canada. Okay, you're in Canada. You know, a lot of people like the flex fit. The uh, you know, you get that fitted hat look. I personally can't wear them because I get migraines when I wear them. The the elastic squeezing on my head gives oh, me migraines. Awesome. I just look dorky. <laughs> I just don't wear them unless they have a special initial on them or something. 
Oh, Mike says North American manufacturer requires supplies from somewhere. Not a lot of looms around these parts. Yep, not a lot of looms. Um, Matt, howdy, folks. I'm sad I can't be there with you. We'll throw you. popcorn at him because it's like a 60 or 70 hour work week here. And it's only Tuesday. And it's only Tuesday, dude. Wow, you need to take a nap. All right. Yeah. Justin says, we are telling customers to focus on a color and style, not brand. Mm -hmm. And we'll try to fulfill the order with what we can. Good idea. Good idea. Yep. And Candace, I'm thankful I have a day job beyond my produce <laughs> business. Me too. Um, Justin, now I'm confused. Do I keep my chickens or eggs in a basket? You need, you need two baskets now. And I Justin, can you should just be happy those. to have a basket. Hey, but I'll, you I'll know, on a side them. note, I could weave you a basket, Justin, and like uh, branch out my business a little more. Well, I'm going to do that. So it's you and me, Letty. We're going to go. be the it, babes. There you go. So Mike said, Jeff, you need to try the Flex Fit 110. It's a snapback with stretch. You can nail the fit perfect. Um, oh, man, I thought he was going to say you could nail it to the back of the head. I swear to God. I'm not allowed to talk about hat brands, but <clears throat> my favorite hat is dry duck. <laughs> duck. duck. It is dry duck. D-U-C-K. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Dry. Okay. There may or may not be lives making fun is of. Is that me. is that a company or is that a brand? What I don't know what. It's oh. a brand. It's okay. Brand. Is is it a type it's of material brand. that makes the duck dry? No. So it's like it's kind of like Carhartt. Okay. So it's really thick, like canvas fabric. Then. Yeah. It's. And is it treated water resistant at all? It is. Yeah. The one okay. reason why I really prefer uh, the Dry Duck brand over Carhartt oh. is because it has embroidery windows. You can unzip the lining and hoop and embroider, and then you zip the lining closed. Nice. nice. Okay, I see that. So well, I, I really like that. They make really good quality, you know, hats, bags, coats. Um, it's just that they include that little embroidery window so that you're not just, you know, smashing and stitching the lining nice. down and killing your um, machine and all sorts yeah yeah but i bought a box of i didn't even know about the brand i bought a box of clearance hats for a dollar a hat and i bought a bunch of them so i could practice on and i got them in and you know when you spend a dollar a hat you expect a dollar a hat quality um but i got them in and i really liked them and it turns out they're like six dollars a hat huh. but they were getting rid of the color that i that i ordered and so they really clearance those down just to get them out of the warehouse. So Man. now to now to resupply or stock up my supply, they um they cost like six dollars a hat. I don't really. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, you, got, you can't only really, you can only really get a good deal once in a while. Yeah. But that but that brings up an interesting point. I think you can upsell people. You, you know, and upsell is mm -hmm. probably the wrong word. If you have displays of different things, yes. you know, everybody goes, I want a Richardson. But if you have something else and you can go, man, you know, that's great. I'll try and get that to you. I'm so glad you didn't want this brand, quote, quote, because, <laughs> boy, it's been flying off the shelves. Everybody is wanting this other style. And you can, you wouldn't want to about it. People that go, oh, wait, so... They're it's ordering better. this, yeah. And you can—I I mean, you can shift people because people, unfortunately, are—you know—oh, well, they're buying this. Well, maybe I need to look at this. And you—you yeah. you can kind of shift it through crafting your response a little. Well, you're selling them. I mean, that's yeah. the point of our business to be really yeah. down down to the point of it is to yeah. make sales. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't make sales, we don't eat. And 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 that's our job. And and you know, we can sugarcoat it and we do and we make it pretty, but but we have got to make sales where it's not about what you're not saying at all is like to try to shove somebody into something. Oh, and yeah. right, exactly. But that's but you know, some people might take the word sales to feel like that like oh my god now they're going to try to sell me a car that i never wanted and get the carriage like whatever it is they do rust protected or whatever and that's not the point yeah. you know it's like trying to get them into the right fit for what they really need to do well i mean even if you have if you have a sample of it and you can get it and you can say here's a richardson and here's the other brand i'm not uh, yeah. you know 
And Where maybe you would say, you know, personally, I like this other brand better because I can get it and it runs well on my machines and it's of equal quality. So you know, a lot of people, they become loyal to brands simply because they've been bombarded with the brand. You know, they see yes. it everywhere. Loyalty. You know, like Richardson, I know baseball teams wear them. Not professional teams. Professional teams wear New Era. But yeah. like Little Leagues, it's usually Richardson's. And so when people look at those, they associate the Richardson cap with that. And they'll come to you and it's a brand that they've heard and they know. And they'll say, well, I've heard and I know I'm all Richardson's. Well, and that's... that's the, the, their basis of the whole decision it's not based off of you know the quality or you know they, they're basing it solely off of i've had so many impressions from this one brand that it's the one brand i recognize and i want to bring that into the forefront well and i've even been able to promote cap america only because it's an american company and a lot of people are it's it's here it's here in the usa so yep um, in uh, missouri yeah that guy, that guy was really with Richardson's, right? I mean, isn't that the story there? I forget. Originally, they split. Yeah. Right, right, right. They there, and then they split. And he started his own company. But um, I've been able to upsell Cap America, and it's a more expensive than a Richardson in some cases. But can you get the hat? <laughs> I can get the hat, and it's a U.S job and it's not sitting yes. in a container ship and that's why there's I, a lot of animosity towards that right now it just well and see that i don't know why people would be upset their stuff is sitting in a container oh. ship for the last six months or moldy. but but the thing about like like the thing about the hats like pacific headwear also branched off of richardson mm -hmm. so now we have two companies that have split off yeah. and and they have good, good. quality hats now exactly yeah. Pacific headwear is not made here, but but Captain America, like you said, Letty, and I want to really expand on that or, or like really shout that out. When you're buying US products, you are you are supporting the people in possibly your neighborhood, you know, the people who live here and who are making a living. And so, you know, if you want US products, you've got to buy US products. Yeah. Well, so not only that. Happened. Guys, this is absolutely the Christmas for your businesses to promote buy local, um, support local. Yeah. And, and everything's here. It, and I agree with that. Freestanding lace. If you can get even the toilet paper things, whether it's baby birth costs, whatever it is, people, I think right now are looking because they realize it's not going to ship in. What can I get locally and what can I have done locally? And they're right. really push for local. I'm going to, I'm going to throw one thing out there because it's something that I've seen that's worked. Um, but what do they call it? It's not repurpose upcycle, not upcycle. Cycle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically you go and you get, you know, discarded clothing that people are, you know, goodwill, that kind of stuff. You embellish it and then you turn around and you sell it and you, you know, I upcycle this, I save this from going to a landfill. I am recycling for the planet and I've added value to it. And people will look at that and, you know, it, it's all in how you word it. It's upcycle. <laughs> I say, you know, it's not goodwill. It's up not goodwill. goodwill. Yep. But you and know, it's not, and, and he's not talking about go get a, a ratty old t-shirt. It could be anything. It could be a blanket. It could be a bedspread. It could be sheets pillowcase yep. whatever Coats, anything you know, yep uh, you know yeah. we have to remember that as decorators our job is to add value yes, yes whatever sir. it is that we buy as a blank and we add value to it and we give to the we company. do so well, we need to just make sure that we're adding value in a way that they're going to you know buy what we have to sell them and right now where it's tough to get stuff maybe the answer isn't necessarily trying to scour the internet looking for you know blanks maybe it's hey you know what well, let's upcycle let's go get something that's just that's like have something ready there like that's yep, yep. a thing it's like upcycling i like that instead of you know i mean like you could already have something already prepared ready that they could just say oh look but i have this upcycled product right here that you can shop right now yep right in a bag you know, it, it, it's something that's out there. I've seen it work. Um, I've seen some people doing vinyl and they're going in there, you know, they, they hit the, the thrift stores, they buy just blank tees 
that people have turned in and they're throwing vinyl designs on them. And I upcycled it, yeah. I've added value, mm -hmm. upcycled, recycled, here you go. Well, and one of the hottest things I've seen come out of Mansfield, Ohio, which I realize is not the center of the universe like Ames, Iowa is, but um, the center is, of the universe, sure. businesses that have closed, logos of restaurants, you know, signage from their favorite back in the day. Go pull your city history of restaurants, drive-ins, whatever that have closed. Repurpose that design on a t-shirt. Distress it a little and ship that baby out. Those people are looking for that retro, um, you know. Boho stuff. People are Exactly. Exactly. And, yeah. and they want it local. And they're like, oh, I remember when we used to go to Shoney's or this or you know the name of this bar and tavern put it on a shirt sell it um like it, it. it is a hot trend right now a very hot trend yep i am going to get i'm going to try and grab some comments here because matt called me out in the comments so we have well, to i don't know why he would he said jeff you're sacking on comments <laughs> <laughs> call me yes, in, the is, comments. in the comments but we have candace i like my embroidery nerd Dry hat. I won. It is actually pretty comfortable. And that's one of the things that I really like about it. When I first got it and I put it on my head, I was like, wow, this is really comfortable. <laughs> Matt, upgrade versus upsell. Uh, Mike, exactly. Like, I've got samples, hats from another supplier inbound right now to look for reasonable alternatives to my regular FlexBit or Yupong source. Uh, most customers are coming around to availability, availability versus perfect. Uh, I'd hear that. He, he's, he's throwing out those Eric Camel words. I can't. I can't read it. <laughs> um, Matt, because I can get it. That should be the selling point. Matthew is very direct to the point. No matter. You know, it, it's like sitting. You know, he'll be really quiet when you're in a room or anywhere, like on a chat or anything. Really, really quiet. You know, forget that he's there, kind of. And all of a sudden, he comes up with his bing, and that was one right there. Because I can get. It. I mean, it is a very valid yeah. selling point in today's economy. Well, that's all he would say if somebody had questions, because I can get it. Yeah. Yep, there we go. Uh, <laughs> we have Betty Jean. When you buy U.S. products, you're supporting your customers. Let's face it, it's usually your local people that buy from you. So you need to provide jobs for them so they can buy from your business too. Yep. Yeah. And Justin says, that's an awesome idea, Letty. You got Justin's thumb up of approval. There we go. <laughs> That's hard to get. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, but you know, I, I, I try to offer my customers the best that I can. And I try to think that I'm fairly patient. You gotta do what you, you know, can do. I try, but I know that, that customer relations is definitely one of my areas that I could do a little better in, um, particularly when I get the, uh, upset customer, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, I, I, when I started off my business, I, I came into it with the attitude that 80% or 20% of your customers will take up 80% of your time. So you fire that 20%. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. And, and, you know, well, <laughs> in some ways I've been thankful that I fired some of my customers. Yeah, but, but you're going to get them back in another person. They're going to yeah. come around. Every, every company has one. Well, it's I want to share a story about a problem I caused for myself and I had a very upset customer and there was only one way for me to fix it. And that was to really cost myself a lot of money. But I had a, when I was new, I had a high school coach wanted me to take their logo and it's over in Prineville, Oregon. And it happened to be a white cowboy hat or something like that. And that, at the time, I said I was new, okay? Again, I say I was new. I stitched the darn sample out on felt because I was new. Okay, don't do what I did. Don't do felt. Well, because I was new, I stitched a white cowboy hat on white felt. And I sent the sample off because I was doing due diligence. You know, I was sending the sample and I made sure that I got everything signed off. Do you know how mad that man was? Do you just know how angry he was when I showed up with white and white? Oh, my God. He just like busted my butt 13 different ways. 
And I, he said, who does that? And I said, what do you mean who does that? Lots of people do it. <laughs> I couldn't believe that he didn't know that in the industry, it's called tone on tone. <laughs> well, anyway, I had to replace everything. And yes, that was that particular Christmas when it was three days before. And I didn't like that. He was one reason why. And we never worked together again. He decided we weren't a very good match. We didn't talk about it. I just got fired. Yeah. That's, all, that's almost like as good as when you do the proof of just the picture and the thread color is different. Just because you want to show them the design. And they're like, but I didn't want yellow. Yes. I I love that. Why is it that color? No, 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 no. I read the wrong shade of red. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know a lot of my local businesses that I work with here. Um, I'll take their logo and a lot of them have Pantone colors for me and I'll match it to thread and I'll, I'll stitch their logo out and I'll take it to them and I'll sit down next to them and hand them their sample on the shirt. You know, I can't do that with everybody. I really wish I could, but you know, over the internet, you, it's just, <laughs> you tell me what you want and I'll mail it to you later. But as a, as a guest promo, Matt, love the additional work that you put into the embroidery uh, nerd website with the thread and the little cards. And oh, man. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. It's, uh, awesome it's a little job. Are getting pretty good. Yes. I'm going to crush it. I'm going to throw a glass down now in a napkin or something and squish it under my heel, right? Mazel tov, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I down. I got you got you have to warn me, so I have my props ready. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think he's got some more tweaks to do to it. I'm going to go ahead and list off all the things he was thinking. So now that it's it, I'm manifesting it. Everybody will know about it, and then you can bug Matt until the feature's implemented. That's what we want, Matt. So take notes since you're not here. I hope you're taking notes. You are behind on the comments, sir. I oh, hold on. We have one. I missed one. Uh, Carol hits says, Oki from Muskegee here. Oki from yep. Thank you. Catching us up. I'm glad that you called me out because had you not, I might have missed it. And then Matt says, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> That's what three dots mean in case you guys uh, ever wondered out there. Dun, Pat dun, dun. Yeah. Patent pending. So um, does anybody have any questions? Like, does anybody have any questions or comments about any situations that you've had or things that you want to know or stuff about difficult people or do you do you are you curious about a disclaimer form when somebody brings in anti Antoinette's thousand year old stocking that's falling apart and would like you to rip out the name and then put somebody else's on there does anybody want to know anything about that and on that case just say no yeah that's okay. so i i have i resolve i will take customer supplied items I will not take a customer supplied item that I cannot financially replace. So, so if it's an irreplaceable, like a, like a cherished, um, what do you call it? Baptism gown or something? It's no, right? I, I'm sorry, but I don't think that we're a good match. If you'd like, I can refer you to other businesses in the area. Yeah, that yeah. I recommend Letty. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh, hey, yeah, Matt there. Hello, guys. Thank you for what you're Hi, doing. Valentina. And Matt says an Excel workbook is coming soon where you put your spools in and it will generate a PDF with your threads using the image in painstakingly and painted Photoshop script individually. Um, okay, Google, how do I put an air fryer? <laughs> put out an air fryer. <laughs> I recommend uh, an extinguisher and or 911. Um, um, sitting there, please use yeah. a type C when you're using an electrical fire. I do know I'm looking forward to Matt's because he wants to make it so that you can get you know, you print off your own thread book and it's your colors of what you carry in your store versus just getting a thread book with everything in it. And I know you know, we, we like to be able to offer everything to our customers, but um, not everything. If you don't have it, don't offer it. No, yeah, yeah. Well, I know initially when I started, I would charge a dollar per spool of anything I had to order. So if I didn't have the color in and they had to have that color, it was going to cost them a dollar dollar a spool. You'd be amazed at how all of a sudden the red I had sitting on my machine became good enough. <laughs> you know what? Some people actually charge for the whole dang spool. Yeah. If they have to order something in, they're like, well, that spool is going to cost me this plus the shipping 
So therefore you are going to buy that school. Okay. Yeah. Here's a charge I don't understand. Why do people charge a hooping charge? To me, that's a difficult embroiderer. It's like, yeah, so I'm going to charge her for the embroidery, but now I'm going to charge a hooping charge. Okay, I want to see you okay. embroider it without hooping it then. Go ahead. I see people that exactly. hooping charge for the stabilizer, and I'm like, that's... What? I, yeah. You know what? It's, those are the people who have taken... They don't, they don't understand their expenses. They don't understand business. And they, they've charged what they think that they should, a dollar per thousand stitches. And That's they realize I'm not making money. How do I begin to make money? And so then they say, well, well if I start charging for hooping and start charging for stabilizer, now I'm going to make money rather than just increase the price. Overall. Yeah. And I call that United <laughs> Airlines. I can't stand that. You know, when you go on a plane and they ask you to pay for your friggin' baggage, like, what are you going to do? Go buy a whole new wardrobe? You have to take stuff. It's yep. like, put it in the price. And that's what you should do with your garments and whatnot. Put everything in. Don't nickel and dime people. People will nickel and dime you back. Yeah. No, it's, it's not. It is not worth it. Um, mm -mm. It truly is not. You're better off coming up with one standard price. You can always, and, and I, I, Jeff, I appreciate from a, when I first started listening to the Inverted and our, your comment was, even if I donate the item, I list the full price of what it was and then show the discount. Because yeah, it, right. there are some people um, that I have done that with of, you know, I give you a discount because I've worked with you or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. They still see here was the full price of that item. And right, I give right. it because they'll refer to someone else and go, oh, it was only this much. No, no, no. It well, was they, this much. And you're, and you're also saying, Letty, that you value your own work. Yeah. So that's, that's something that, you know, I wanted to touch on really briefly. We're coming up to our hour, but I want to, to go through this just super briefly. Um, if, if, if Jeff and Letty, you guys don't mind if I kind of segue into self-care a little bit? Really? Uh, sure. can, I, can I read through a bunch of comments first? Yes. Sure. Okay. So, Mike Muldowney, speaking from my wife's experience, fill the sink with water and dump the thing in it. Unplug it first. I think that's for Matthew. Yeah, it is. Uh, Matt, I charge for literally everything that goes into a patch. Yeah, but you put it in one one price. Right. Not like Nickel and Mine, nine. I charge for a value added process. I charge a PIA. Part of embroidering, not a separate charge. Merrill is option, separate charge. Uh, Valentina, everything you say is true. I think as a business owner, sometimes we get difficult clients. Why do we? Mike might still culminate in one single price at the end. But yes. yes. Matt per patch, stabilizer, bobbins, average thread cost, area of twill, Velcro or VSN, time to embroider, time to hand slash laser yep. cut, time to sew Velcro, and packaging. I've seen his spreadsheet. It's pretty yes. impressive. You know what? That's why the man makes money is because he doesn't donate his stuff. Okay. And Candace, I am stuck with my initial price with one customer, but my price has gone up to produce it. It's so hard to raise prices for an established customer. You know... It is, Perfect but if right I now. was you, I'd do it now. You Perfect need to do it right now. Yeah. Everything's going up. Don't wait until the prices of things start going back down or things yeah. settle down and go even. You know, right now is the time to send an email due to global supply chain, yes. increased costs of shipping, handling, and manufacturing supply. costs. I am yeah. unable to continue offering you these items at this price yes. because all the previous listed things, there will be a short price increase, which is something that I've actually seen, you know, SNS Activewear send out an email, like the Sandmark sent out an email. Right. You, you don't say, and it's, it's effective on your next order. You say like, so in three weeks time or whatever, you don't just say, oh, and guess what? You know, that thing you just ordered, well, it went up 3%, but surprise, you don't, you tell them what's coming. Yep, send it, send out the email now. And now, you know, it's you like a mandate. To... Sit out now, rip that thing off, yep. and let her have. <laughs> uh, you need to do it because you need to value your own. When you go to the grocery store and whatever you just bought went up, it's because the grocery store plans to stay in business. And they don't say, yeah, but you've been shopping with us for 13 years. It doesn't matter. 
their cost went up. So your cost went up and established customers. You just have to come from the heart. And I mean that speak from the soul and, and it's chill speak from your heart to their heart. And if they don't get it, well, then, you know, but they always get it really. You know, and, and like the, a lot of the manufacturers that I've gotten emails from, they've said, you know, it'll be a 20% increase on X amount of our inventory that we have. It's yes. going to be, you know, kind of, you don't have to give them a hard number, but you can say, here's kind of a ballpark. It's going to go up. Yeah. Just get ready. Like, you cannot buy a hat for the same price yeah. that you can now in 1992, that you could in 1992. Right. The cost went up. You just, you can't. You can't and do so, it in go up so you need to take care of yourself yep so now with that i'm gonna put my foot in my mouth and um i'm gonna let jerry lee go ahead and You're take so on self-care well do you want to catch the comments before i do that okay so now mike's leaving us <laughs> just kidding michael downey i gotta go get chat tonight catch you on the flip-flop that's a Matt here's the secret for one patch it's 19 times the cost of materials for what i charge then I have my own formula for quantity tier breaks and wholesale discount military, et cetera. That's either a very cheap weight. You have very low production costs or a very expensive patch. He's got seven heads and one on his shoulder. So does that mean eight? <laughs> He's an eight head. And Valentina, I am considering new in this business. I'm still learning your Yay. That's why we're here. That is totally why we're here. This is why we do what we do. All right. Okay. I caught up. I'm ready. Okay. So here's the deal. During these times, there's going to be stress coming at you, whether you think so or not. It doesn't matter if your life is like pristine. Things are going to happen. Bad weather, fire, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's like anything else in your business, you must take care of yourself first. You need to make sure that you're getting enough sleep. I'm not joking. You need to make sure you're getting enough sleep. You need to make sure that you're staying hydrated, that you're drinking water. I'm a massage therapist also. I, so I, I'm trained in this and that's, I'm telling you from true training, okay? You need to stay hydrated. <clears throat> and also during the holidays, um, we tend to eat, not great food. A lot of people tend, you know, there's the, the like. My diet the, consists of Rolos. Yes, that <laughs> too. <laughs> but the real, one of the things that you do when you are um, drinking a lot of water is it's washing toxins out of your body. Okay. So like if you have an overload of whatever, like you ate too many cheese puffs or Rolos or sour popsicles or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, that one too. Um, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, you need a little more. Oh, you need a little more. But you need to make sure that you take care of yourself. You also need to make sure that you keep a routine. Don't skip important meals. Don't eat a bunch of crap food. Don't don't overload on sugar. And these sound commonsensical, but the thing is, is that when we're stressed, whenever we're upset, there, it's an automatic thing that our body does. Is that we will we will automatically crave the foods that are worst for us. Okay. Whenever we're stressed or anything, we want what we call comfort food. You all know what comfort food is. And the reason we call it that is because it comforts it. The, uh, the problem is, is it's usually not something that our body is going to function well on. It's usually like ice cream or cookies or chips. I'm just speaking from my own personal. Now I'm hungry for ice cream, cookies, and chips. Hey, throw in a chocolate bar. We're good. But so you want to make sure that you're eating something and that you're getting enough rest and you need to be able to say no to customers. If you can't honestly do it, don't take something away from yourself in order to make Christmas happen or whatever you will or whatever the Hanukkah, what Kwanzaa, whatever it is, don't take away from your well-being. You can be totally present for people when you are healthy, when you're not deny yourself the ability to do that, but you also deny giving your, your customers, the people are coming to you because they trust you. You're giving, you're denying them the ability to have your full attention and presence. So you need to make sure to take care of yourself and you need to honor when you say no, you need to honor that. Okay. So take care of yourself because it's, it's that time of year where we do burn the candles at both ends this is um, the time where we don't sleep a lot and where we're running ragged and 
because of everything that's gone on and, and we're now in the second holiday season of um, our, our current situation worldwide, you need to take extra care. Okay. Be good to you. Try to be understanding if you get grumpy or if you snap at someone, stop and figure out why are you like, why are, why, what made you react, figure it out within yourself and then acknowledge that if it happens and let that person know, you know, I'm sorry, I, I have to own that. Like do your due diligence, be responsible for your own energy when you go into a room, you know, bring, bring your best when you can. And if you can't, if you know that you're spiraling somewhere, get out, go, just go. I don't care where you go, take it on down, go take a walk, get completely away, go take a loud ride in the car with the stereo blasting, whatever. It doesn't matter if you don't have time. You'll keep screwing things up if you keep doing what you're doing. So go get completely away from it. You'll come back and you'll be able to nail everything that you just tried to do. And that's that's it. Drink lots of water. You know, it's it, one of the things that I, I want to add to that is don't take on more than you can do because taking on that no. one extra job can push you to burn out. And when you right. burn out, you're not going to be fulfilling any of your orders. It's not just going to be that one order that you're going to mess up. You're not going to be fulfilling anything. You're not, you're not going to want to look at an embroidery machine. You're not going to walk in there. You're not going to work on anything. And you know, it takes a toll on the quality that you're going to put out. And it, it can even cause you to not put out anything at all. And so you, you have to make sure that when you're, when somebody's coming to you and they're saying, please, I need this buy, you know, if you say no, you've got to kind of stick with that and you make sure that you're looking out for you, not only so that you can continue to do what, to do your job, but also to make sure that you can help all of your customers that you're working with. Yes. So. Be fully please. present for those people Yep. And for yourself. Yeah. So, and, and I will add, so everybody right now, go, go get your calendars that you all have your little stuff on and what you're working on and turn to that December page <laughs> right there. And I suggest you put a big X wherever it is that you are going to stop taking and working down in your respective shop. And she's right. right. And no means no means no. And when someone yeah. tries to manipulate you or guilt you, just remember what it's going to cost you or somebody in yeah. your family. Remember yeah. who comes so, first. Right. You know, it might be a good idea to email all your customers and say, here's a reminder. The Christmas cutoff is coming soon. Absolutely. And, and as stupid as it may seem, if you are shipping, back that up by two weeks. Yes. Oh, I two problems. I mean, if Amazon can't if Amazon can't deliver Prime anymore, USPS, FedEx, and UPS, they're going to take extra time to you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Into it. Like I said, seriously, guys, take out your calendars, start writing your dates down, and she's right. Be very diligent about the jobs you take in. Uh, estimate your time that it's going to take you to get them out of the shop pad your time yeah this is the time where that planning truly comes into effect for your business to and make and, yeah but look at your family commitments because you don't want to be spending christmas eve stitching out your family's christmas gifts because oh. you did everybody else's or and missing out on your son's or daughter's recital or their, you know, because yes. you're too busy sitting there trying to yeah. get your stuff out. Yeah. Or being that yep. So, so like I said, do it, do it now, guys, because it is. It, don't let this happen yeah. to you now selling three slightly smashed embroidery machines, laser heat yes. press, minor anger damage included. <laughs> And that's, and that's what happens at this time of year. We tend to sometimes throw it all up in the air and get done and it's not okay. And Matt also says, also use that mushroom cloud sticker to mark the day you won't get supplies until after January. <sighs> I feel bad. <laughs> okay, Google, what is a family? <laughs> Matt's on fire tonight. You Anybody who still loves you after you've embroidered the very end of it on Christmas Eve, that person yes. is family. Take them. They're riding and dying. I can tell. Yep. So I am going to burn through 
the last few comments. Oh, yeah, here. we're in bonus time. And bonus. then we're gonna we'll we'll go ahead and close it out. So All right. we have Valentina. Thank you for saying that, Jerry Lee. It's true for the last month. I'm being worked really late every day. And yes, it happened to me last week. You know, I've been burned out a couple of times too, and it's just not fun. Not fun. It's like um, stop it. You deserve better. Treat yourself better. Treat yourself like you want to be treated and how you want to treat your customers. Yep. All right. All right. So I think we're at a good spot that we can um, wrap up. Matt's topping, typing things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did say it was quiet. Well, sometimes you are, but of course you want to prove me wrong tonight. I'm going to spank you next time I see you, sir. <laughs> All right. This just took a while. Um, with that. You know how we'll, it is. Uh, I like a good hard. Here, Chris, Chris has a kid. We'll segue here. Chris has a question. What sales channels do you guys find the best to sell through? What's your market? Yeah. Yep. Who are you trying to sell to? You know, I, 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 what is it? That's a real question. What is your market, Chris? Yep. I sell to sell? people who collect patches and I make patches for people who collect patches. That all happens on the Facebook group. So and you, my so do so, and you do laser work for people who know that you do lasers. Yep. So, yep. so that is where you go. Letty, what's your market? Um, my market is Facebook. Uh, like I said, the custom designs for restaurants is the local group, you know, like, I mean, like Mansfield, whatever, that group and Facebook. I do have some stuff on Instagram. I do have a website, but a lot of my business, guys, comes from word of mouth. Yep. Like, Mine comes from mouth. Facebook and word of mouth. I do have an Etsy shop, but I haven't been able to um, keep up with it um, yeah. because I've been really busy, but word of mouth is a really big deal. And I think that the word of mouth, the reason it's such a big deal is if you are, if you have, if somebody has a negative experience, they're going to tell at least 10 people and word of mouth, they tell everybody as well. And so that's really cool. But what else is good is that they're actually validating that you're a good person to go to. And so because of that, your reputation spreads, it takes longer, but once you, once, once people know that you are of integrity, they will come to you because of that. Yep. I go by my favorite saying, it takes 10 out of boys and they're all wiped out by one off shit. Yeah, they are. <laughs> That's a fact. You know, his I son really like that did this, Letty. <laughs> I got spanked for that one. I said the word crap and got in trouble. Oh, crap. <laughs> Adam's watching. No, he's not. He's in bed. His bedtime is 9 o'clock. It is now 9-11 in the center you. of the universe. Thank but. you all for being here. Yep. We really appreciate you a lot. Thank you for spending your Tuesday with us. Yep. And Letty, thank you too. Oh, thank you for inviting me on. Yeah, Letty, it's been great having you on. Um, we'll definitely have to do it again. Uh, again, and yes, again. With that, I'm going to sum up yeah. some of the announcements. So uh, uh, ISS Long Beach yeah. is now, you can, you can purchase tickets to go to the show. I saw an email that they're starting to open up registration for Great. that. Okay, I'm registering. Who's going? I'm. I will be in Long Beach. I'm trying. I'm thinking about it. You're gonna come. No, you're coming, man. Wear that jacket. We'll all sign it again. No, she's got. She's gonna have a new one. I gotta Great. get a new one. Yeah. Great. It's awesome. it's a per show thing. It may have to be a bowling shirt. I may have to do a bowling shirt. Ooh. Ooh. It should say pen pals on it. Sorry. Oh, it should. <laughs> Okay, good. Yes. Okay. So Long Beach, Jeff, what are the dates on that? Do you know? Uh, January something. I can't remember. I think it's oh. in later January. <laughs> um, okay. through the 23rd, maybe something. Like yeah. That. I yeah. would say 23rd to the 25th. So something you can like find the information on that on the impressions website. I will because I'm going to go sign up for my free pass and make sure I get it since Matthew isn't going to make the show and I can't <laughs> steal his duplicate freaking badge. <laughs> I am a transparent person. I will say it like it is. I had I know, it, I know. and that's just how it was. I registered and registered, and they told me I was registered. And then when I got there, they said, ma'am, we do not know you. Get out of the $45. And I said, I will do neither. And I went over to Matthew and said, give me one of those two badges you got, mister. And I got one. <laughs> all right so impressions is coming up uh, the virtual applicate getaway is also coming up here pretty soon too um i'm pretty excited for that 
I'm going to be teaching in it, and there may or may not be a guest appearance from Mr. Justin Armenta in my class. So that is coming up. I'm very excited for that as well. And I think that's pretty much everything. Uh, make sure that you order your supplies and your things uh, early because Christmas is coming. Um, if you're looking for that, that hard to find Christmas gift for the person that does embroidery, um, I actually got that. How I met Jerry Lee was I got a needleys for Christmas. And it's I have cool. some awesome colors, man. <laughs> she has some awesome colors, so um, <laughs> definitely take an, keep an eye out and pick up some good Check stuff for you. Not beautiful. Not beautiful. They are beautiful. They are so. They're all made too, so you know. I mean, I and I met somebody asked me today. One of my friends asked me, so exactly what is it you do, Jerry Lee? And I said, what? And she's like, what do you do? Like, do people make things for you and just like give them to you and then you sell them or something? And I said, no, darling, I am <laughs> that person. I do every single one. I bought this company. I bought the patent and everything from an 87 year old. He's 87 now, but he used to pay my, the guy who makes these for me. He used to pay him a dollar per tool to put him together. And I was like, oh, contraire dudes no so Jerry Lee, just so you know matt can't afford that one <laughs> i'm a fifth oh he i but he you want what's could you put up his next comment he's a, he's a size 1506 happy you don't need another needle ease until you get that six head and then if you have a six head machine of any brand you can afford six needle eases buddy one for each head <laughs> yes in all well, sorts of different colors all right but those that's pretty much all the announcements i i have jerry lee do you have any other announcements i think we hit them all i think we did i have one question for you after the show oh yeah i, I plan on hanging out for a bit um buddy do you have any announcements nope nope just the long beach is open guys right, well with that we'll go ahead and wrap this up that Thank is jerry lee madeiras from sun facer manufacturing we have <laughs> letty walker from walker woods creation and I am Jeff Fuller from Fuller Embroidery Works. And we are all here representing the embroidery nerd. We'd like to thank you guys for hanging out with us and have a great night.